Hey everybody and welcome to Collider's Top 10 Trailers of 2015. The ball dropped on 2016 and with this year comes most of the movies that we first heard about last year. Here with me are Mark Ellis and John Campia. You know, with the advent of trailers, instead of debuting in front of other movies and theaters, actually popping up on YouTube first, we see these numbers exploding. And what is it equaling? It's equaling people finding out and getting excited about movies way in advance and increasing opening weekend box office numbers. That's right, they're little tiny people pieces of art in amongst themselves. Sometimes when I go see a movie, I'm actually more looking forward to the previews than I am the actual <laughs> film. The only thing that bugs me about trailers is that we still call them trailers and not previews. They're definitely previews. Now, how do we come up with what we call the 10 best trailers of 2015? Well, this is our process. We took all the votes from our friends at Collider.com, the website branch of Collider. We took all of us over here at Collider Video, the video side of Collider, and we asked you guys on social media for you guys to vote on it as well. So then we took those three results, Collider.com, Collider Video, and you, the fans, mathematically calculated it all up and we came up with our top 10. I loved incorporating the fans into this list because it's great to see everybody's individual take and I know the answers already. This is gonna be a fun <laughs> list to do. So here we go with the top 10 trailers of 2015. Number 10, The Witch. The 1700s set horror thriller has already terrified viewers at Sundance, where director David Eggers won Best Director. The eerie tone set by the trailer has the rest of us squealing with delightful fear. When an infant son goes missing, the town folk assume it's the work of his older sister. Is she herself a witch, or are there much more sinister forces at play in the dark woods? We'll find out when the film opens in late February. This trailer kind of represents the new age of trailers. Go back 10, 15 years before YouTube is really big and popular. This is a movie nobody ever hears about. You're not gonna see this in front of it, but because it's released in social media, because it's released on YouTube and gets around, it instantly draws attention to this project. I'm one of those guys that it was, this is a film that was not on my radar in the least, like at all. But then a whole bunch of people start tweeting me, John, have you seen this trailer? The Witch, The Witch, have you seen this? It's on YouTube, I pop over and see it, and it did exactly what a trailer's supposed to do. You're gonna hear us say that a lot during this list, but it did what a trailer's supposed to do. It introduced me to the film, it got me excited about it, and it it's creepy as hell mm -hmm. for a trailer. I never find trailers creepy. This trailer was creepy, absolutely deserves me on this list. My first thought watching this trailer was a quote from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. A witch! Oh my <laughs> God, this movie a looks witch. so terrifying. And you're right, it represents the new media of trailers, but it also goes back to the old school because it's not flashy. It builds a very quiet, creepy tone. It almost feels like, I hate to say it, that movie, The Village. Remember when we saw that trailer? <laughs> oh, and we're yeah. like, man, Shyamalan's done it again. He didn't do it with that movie, but I think this film is going to pay off a lot more than The Village did. Number nine, The Revenant. There was already plenty of excitement surrounding the follow-up to Birdman for director Alejandro Gonzalez in Ritu, and when the trailer hit, it appeared the hype would be worth it. Incredible action scenes and intense moments featuring Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy showcased a movie that would definitely be a contender come Oscar season. And this trailer was coming off the heels of that first shot that we saw of The Revenant when that first picture came out of DiCaprio in the woods looking like oh, yeah. he just went through some sort of thing. <laughs> We we're like, he's definitely gonna win an Oscar. So that's all I was looking for with the trailer. And I got so much more. I realized that this movie is gonna be a contender for best picture because of the way that Inaratu shot this film. Yeah. You heard about the natural daylight and these long takes, these action sequences that looked unlike anything we'd ever seen on film before. So the trailer did such a great job of selling you on what this movie was. You get these movies coming out that you know a little bit about in the f already in advance. And you know who's in them, you got reason to be excited. This. The Revenant trailer to me is the polar opposite of what Sisters was for me. Because, <laughs> and now follow me, I know, it's like, how can you compare these two things? I know, Ouch. but follow me here. You got a movie coming out where the cast is, in, you love the pairing of the cast, whether it's Leo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy. For me, it's Amy Poehler and Tina Fey, they're comedic gold together. You're, you hear the premise, you sounds like this premise is perfect for the talents that these two people bring. You cannot wait to see it, and then the trailer comes, and the trailer sucked. So some people would say to me, well, John, you knew the, tr the Revenant trailer was gonna be good. It's like, no, you'd never really know. And then the trailer dropped. You're right, the first thing that totally grips you is 
the look of the film, the way it is shot with all natural light and the stark beauty of it. And you can just tell this was probably one hell of a movie to try to shoot the way they did that. But it captured everything, unlike the sisters trailer, it captured everything <laughs> we were hoping it was going to be. It captured that grittiness. It captured the intensity. It captured that the depth of human rage also all the same time. It just blew my mind when I saw that trailer and I just and went from like here to here of not being able to wait to see it. Yeah, movie theaters are generally colder anyway. They're maybe 65 degrees. After this trailer came on, it felt like about 40. Yeah. <laughs> Number eight, Suicide Squad. Director David Ayer gave a pre-trailer motivational speech at Comic-Con this summer. Then fans in Hall H got their first glimpse of the DC Studios film set for release this August. Its nasty tone and intriguing characters had fans buzz in. Then the leaked trailer sparked a firestorm online. DC upped the release date of the trailer as a result, and we got to see Will Smith Margot Robbie and company in action. And yes, we also got to see the first dialogue from Jared Leto's Joker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you get these little, you get starry-eyed when you mention that. This is one of those trailers that's a lot different from The Revenant, where The Revenant is coming out and you are just expecting great, huge things. I think with Suicide Squad, a lot of us are very excited that DC was going to take a swing at this. But I also think a lot of us didn't know what to expect. Like, okay, you got Jared Leto. We saw that soccer hooligan picture of him with damage and all that kind of It's like, okay, maybe that'll be cool. Maybe it won't be. I don't know. Then you hear the cast. Like, that's kind of an eclectic group. All right, we'll give it a shot. Oh, Margot Robbie is, uh, okay, yeah. That's, okay, yeah, yeah, the baseball bat. That's all working for me. But we didn't really know what to expect. And then it drops a Comic-Con. And it was not what everybody was hoping for. It was what everybody needed. It was the exact right trailer that you're going to get people who were hoping this movie would be good on board and people who were skeptical about the potential of this movie on board. And it did all of that. Harley Quinn became the focus and that was a very smart move of them because I think they know the most marketable piece they have in this right now was Margot Robbie, one of the most beautiful actresses in the world right now, super talented actress as well and you're doing her up as Harley Quinn, one of the biggest fan favorite characters out there right now. You kept most of the focus on her but everything else was also perfectly laid out. They set up the story, they explained who they are, what they're doing, why they're being sent to do it. And now we don't know exactly what the mission is yet but the trailer covered all of it and got huge buzz, huge pop, got out there. It was just an excellently done trailer. Yeah, a good trailer can really lock you into the tone of the movie. And something like Suicide Squad, which comes from comic book source material, we really don't know what's going to happen because as comic book fans have seen over the years, sometimes their movies can get really silly and crazy, and other times it can be a dark, gritty tone. That's what it looked like Suicide Squad was aiming for and what it hit, at least from this trailer. And I agree with you. I loved hearing the voiceover about how the government is recruiting bad guys yeah. to take care of something even more evil that's going on in the world but I also love the ending because we knew we wanted a Joker payoff yes, we saw we the did. picture we <laughs> wanted to see just a little bit just give us a little bit of a peek we just want to look into the keyhole in the doorway of what Joker is going to sound like what he's going to look like and this one it's never going to make people forget Heath Ledger's Joker but it definitely gave us a different take number seven Creed it's not all that often that all the doubters can be silenced after a single trailer, but that was the case with Creed. Could another film set in the Rocky universe work, or would it feel like a tired last gasp for Balboa on screen? By the time Sylvester Stallone appears for the first time, audiences were already locked into the story of Adonis Creed, played by Michael B. Jordan. And my litmus test for whether a Rocky Universe movie trailer works or not is did I work out after I saw it? <laughs> I ran like eight miles after seeing Creed because I was so pumped up. And I, I confess, I watched the Creed show about five times, then went to the gym because I couldn't get enough of it. I thought I was just going to get some nice nostalgia seeing Stallone on screen again. And instead, what I came away with is that Ryan, Co Ryan Cooper has a real direct and unique take on this story. Michael B. Jordan, I always thought was a great fit for playing Adonis Creed. And they didn't give away too much. They gave away enough maybe a little bit too much with the story about rocky but overall this is the trailer that proved to all the naysayers that hey rocky's back and he's bringing adonis with him and that's going to be the focal point of this movie something really special happens when you get the right combination of director with actor whether it's scorsese with de niro or scorsese with dicaprio or, or there, and there's a number of on like tom hanks and steven spielberg together 
Kugler and Michael B. Jordan are becoming one of those tandems. You know, when you go back and look at Fruitvale Station, so you knew coming into the film, even though a lot of people were left scratching their heads, like, really? You're going back to the Balboa universe again? But then when you heard that pair was coming, that left it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't fall over in love with this trailer. I liked the trailer. I did. Uh, this is one of those great times when you think the movie actually way went beyond the trailer. Because sometimes, a lot of times, the trailers are way better than movies. I liked this trailer. It was good. It did move me from being a skeptic to being somebody who looked forward to it. It's not as high on my list. Like, on my personal list, it definitely comes in a little bit lower than number seven. But after we put it all together, other people felt differently came up there. But the movie was fantastic. I mean, one of the best films of the year. And I cannot wait wait to see what these two guys, Coogler and Michael B. Jordan, do again in the future, and I can't wait to see the next trailer they do together. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, Hail Caesar. The Coen brothers are back in a big way with Hail Caesar, a caper that takes place in the golden age of Hollywood. Stars are everywhere here, including Channing Tatum, Scarlett Johansson, Josh Brolin, Tilda Swinton, and Jonah Hill. Oh, and George Clooney gets kidnapped, so you know, hijinks will ensue. <laughs> With a release date of February 5th, we won't have to wait too long to see the next film, both written and directed by the Coens. Everything I wanted this trailer to be, man. Everything I wanted this trailer. Okay, first of all, it's the Coens. These are two of the greatest filmmakers of our generation. You're talking about The Big Lebowski. You're talking about Old Brother We're Out There. You're talking about old No Country for Old Men. You're talking about Raising Arizona. The list goes on and on and on and on. I'm probably list leaving off like three of the all-time great films that they've done. But once again, you gotta wait till you see that trailer. And then the trailer comes out and it's everything you want. The beats, the humor. I love the cast. I'm completely in the cast. And of course, pairing George Clooney with the Coen brothers is always seems to be a formula that works. So yeah, for me, this had the pace, this had the energy, that frenetic kind of feel to it. It felt like it had the comedy. It raised my expectations and it raised my hopes for this movie an awful lot. It's, it's what the Coen brothers do when they do stuff well, which is often. There's that wacky tone to it, but it also is going to be very funny and you're going to get a great, not only a great cast, but the way that these characters are playing their roles like seeing Josh Brolin as his studio head George Clooney as the most successful actor in Hollywood <laughs> and he gets kidnapped and I I can't wait to see all the side plots in this movie because you have such a great cast and it's so rich in how they fill it out what else is going to be going on in this movie other than what the main focus is that's always one of my most fun things to watch when I see a Coen Brothers movie is what else is going on behind the scenes number five the nice guys Fans of director Shane Black are already certain that he's back to Kiss Kiss Bang Bang form with The Nice Guy starring Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe. Its first trailer looks like the movie will be the comedy to beat in 2016, and most of the laughs will come from the pairing of the two primarily dramatic actors. Gosling and Crowe are private eyes investigating a case in the 1970s Hollywood, and the mismatched couple have a prime summer release date of May 20th. And the trailer made me laugh, and what made me laugh the most was, yeah, there's some crazy stuff that happened seeing Ryan Gosling try to keep a bathroom door open with the cast oh, gosh, on. Yeah. There's hysterical things in here, but I found myself even enjoying just looking at Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe on screen together. There's <laughs> something about that pairing that just catches your eye and it makes you giggle. It puts you in your happy place. So even if you're not laughing out loud at it, you're just enjoying watching these two. I think that's what this movie is going to be for the entire two hours. It's going to be like the first half of Iron Man 3 and then just continue to be like the first half of Iron Man 3. This trailer came out of nowhere. Uh, because it was one of those trailers where it was in the middle of the day, we're around here in the studio, and all of a sudden that trailer drops. Look, I was already looking forward to it because it is Shane Black, the director of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I think Russell Crowe is one of the best actors working today. Ryan Gosling is certainly one of the top actors in the industry today. So you're hoping for something good. And this trailer gave us more than what we were expecting. This looks like it's going to be a marriage between LA Confidential and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang in all the right ways. That whole scene of him in the bathroom stall, yes. To me, what the one that made me fall over was when he's got him down on the ground and Crow's got his arm up and he's like, okay, now when you go to the doctor and <laughs> Ryan Gosling's on the ground, no, no. Like it was just so well done. Again, it looks like the humor this could be a very exciting movie. It could be a great crime noir film and all of that. But it also looks like it could be the funniest film of the year at the same time. So obviously it has to be ranked right up there. Number four, Captain America Civil War. Thanksgiving gave most fans their first look at Captain America Civil War and the bevy of Marvel superheroes that will be enlisted. Steve Rogers and Tony Stark aren't seeing eye to eye and the rift could have intergalactic implications. Fans got to see a quick glimpse of Black Panther for the first time, but maybe this trailer was most memorable for who it didn't reveal. 
Spider-Man is nowhere to be found, uh, yet. Civil War will swing into theaters on May 6th. You know, every once in a while we get to go to a convention, whether it's Comic-Con or D23 or something else, and we get to see a big ton bit of footage, and then later the trailer comes out, and we get to say, yeah, the trailer was good, but wait till you get to see what we saw in the footage, right? This is a totally different and opposite situation. We got to see like a 10-minute presentation on Captain America Civil War at D23, and they showed some good stuff and some funny stuff, and we all enjoyed it. But this trailer just went to another level. It is a beautifully crafted trailer with a really nice mixture, knowing when to switch between something a little bit funny, something deep, something emotional, some action, something a little bit funny again, and end off on an emotional note. Like, it's just beautifully crafted. Everything from... Tony saying, you know, I was your friend too, or so was I. When he says, sorry, uh, Tony, but he's my friend, so was I. I mean, that was beautiful. To Tony holding Iron Machine in his arms, to that great final shot of both, you know, Winter Soldier and Captain America both beating on Iron Man at the same time. It is just so well put together, amps it up, perfect timing, well crafted. It's got to be in our top five. This trailer had two jobs that were really crucial to knock out of the park. One is that you had to let everybody know just how many superheroes are going to be yeah. participating in this Civil War, but even more so is that this is a Captain America movie. So the first half of this trailer was actually my favorite part because we got to follow that this is Cap's storyline. This is him talking to the government. They're trying to decide how best to police Earth going forward, and then you see all the other superheroes yeah. go in, and whether they agree with what's going on or not, and you're right. That action scene at the end, seeing Cap go against Iron Man. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. And for a guy that does have his hesitations, not about how much I'm going to like the movie. I'm going to love being in a the theater. I'm going to shove a bunch of popcorn in my face. It's going to be great. But what are the stakes here? Is it just going to be a scrimmage between superheroes or are we going out for blood? This trailer, more than anything I've seen or heard up to that point, indicated that, yeah, we're taking this seriously. We're going to be cracking one-liners at each other while we're fighting, but we have a point to make and we're standing staunchly on our side. I also love that you didn't get Spider-Man just yet. It was a smart play. Show us some Black Panther. Let us know that he is going to be one of the central figures in there, and Spider-Man just might swing in for a scene or two. And seeing Bucky and Steve tossing the shield back and forth to each other as they're beating on Iron Man, but you raise a great point about how are they taking this seriously? Because one of the questions a lot of us had coming out of D23 and seeing that footage was this feels like they're just having an argument over lunchtime, right? right? right. But then this trailer comes. No, nope, takes it to a whole new level. Number three, Deadpool. Even before we saw any footage for Deadpool, fans were optimistic. Its marketing campaign included the trademark tongue-in-cheek humor and wicked sarcasm that was sorely lacking from Deadpool's previous on-screen outing in X-Men Origins Wolverine. But hysteria was raised to another level when the first trailer premiered at Comic-Con and the Merc with the Mouth showed us all why he needed an R rating. Ryan Reynolds stars as the foul-mouthed superhero, and the film opens on February 12th. And you know, if we were doing a top 10 marketing campaigns of 2015... Of all time! It, it, Deadpool <laughs> has done such a great job from day one as far as what they're doing with this property and the trailer that I was lucky enough to be in Hall H and experience it with that 6,000 fan base for the first time. You're watching it, and it starts out as kind of a by-the-number superhero story. Somebody, he's got a problem, he's got a disease, it's incurable, we're going to make him better. But there's... There's just little notes of something else. Man, he's cracking a lot of jokes here. There's things going on. Oh, he just made fun of Green Lantern. Did you hear that? Then when we got to see Deadpool in costume for the yeah. first time, he's drawn. He's listening to Salt and Pepper. I believe if Salt and Pepper was at En Vogue, I'm sorry. I get the 90s confused a lot. I was on a lot of stuff. When you see this trailer and you laugh at it, you see the violence in it, you're like, this definitely deserved an R rating. And they're not just taking their R rating and putting it out there as a marketing campaign. This clearly is a movie that needs to be rated R for all the violence and the hardcore laughs. They're going to be foul mouth, but hilarious too. These trailers, and I say these trailers because to me, honestly, you can almost interchange that first first trailer that dropped and the most recent trailer that dropped in late 2015 because they're just so brilliant but they serve as marketing tools really with Fox saying to the audience we have listened to you mm -hmm. you wanted a hard R unapologetic running his mouth Deadpool here you go and they have done it and delivered it in spades I'm glad you brought up the marketing campaign because if we were talking about top marketing campaigns of the year this is number one by far with a bullet easy no questions asked the way they have handled this property so far is outstanding we've gone from when they announced Deadpool to going all right some of us comic book fans are really gonna love it maybe we can draw in some interest from other people maybe it can do okay make back that 30 million dollars they're gonna spend on the movie this marketing campaign and this trailer kicking it off has taken it to 
damn, I wonder how much money this movie can make. Because now you're hearing people who have never gone to comic book movies before talking about, I want to go see that Deadpool movie because I saw that Red Band trailer, whichever one you're talking about, and that made me want to go. That is the hallmark of a great trailer. Yeah, and it gave us a glimpse, too, into you, uh, all the comedy you're going to see from Deadpool yeah. as well as T.J. Miller is going to have a big role in that as well. He's hilarious. He could and steal the movie. He could totally steal the movie. He's a great comic as well. And then you also, on the other side, you have Colossus showing up. Yeah. Just for a second, <laughs> but it's like, oh, yeah, they're in this universe. So now we got a whole bunch of stuff to get excited about. Number two, Star Wars The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens trailer made the most collective noise online this year, and while the Monday Night Football trailer got record for most clicks, it was the predecessor that won our hearts. Causing grown-ass adults to weep both online and at Star Wars Celebration, the second trailer gave us more images to break down and dissect. Then we saw Han and Chewbacca and Kleenex stock grows through the roof. <laughs> the smuggler and his trusted companion were back in the Millennium Falcon. Chewie were home indeed. You know, I was not at Star Wars Celebration. I was on my way home from an awards ceremony in Las Vegas in the time, but I was in the car and I felt like I was Obi-Wan Kenobi when Alderaan blew up. Because <laughs> I'm in the car and you could sense a disturbance in the force. It was that trailer being shown to all the sweaty nerds. You were one of them oh, yeah. in that hall at Star Wars Celebration, seeing that movie, that, that trailer for the first time. And that moment, you could feel the earth shake when Han comes on screen and you see him and he says, Chewie, we're home. I mean, it, it, was, it just broke people down. Images started flooding in on Twitter and across social media of, as Ashley was saying, grown ass men hugging and embracing and weeping in tears. And you knew Star Wars was back. And that was the true. Now, that first teaser they put out in December of 2014, that was an announcement. Like, hey, hey, look at Star Wars. There's an X-Wing fighter. and there's That's great. But it was this trailer that really signaled, this isn't gonna be another prequel. This isn't gonna be just something calling itself Star Wars. It's Star Wars and it's back. And that trailer really kicked off the huge momentum that we see breaking box office numbers now. I've been stuck in a few asteroid fields driving home from Vegas as well. Luckily, I was squarely in Star Wars Celebration watching this thing happen on the huge screen. And you're right, I was just one of the, there's tears coming out and I didn't know when it was gonna happen. You see the, you, you see the, the desert landscape and you hear the music and then when it pans over and you see that that is a huge Star Destroyer yeah. that is crashed, you're like, oh my God, they got it right. That was my aha moment where they knocked this out of the stadium. Hearing Luke Skywalker's voiceover, at the time I was so excited, I didn't realize that that's his line from Return of the yes. Jedi, but they also might have re-recorded it, so it gave it some added weight as to who exactly he's talking to or talking about. You see that hand, there was debate over whose hand that was, touching R2-D2. You see Kylo Ren again, you see all these characters, and we didn't need anything else. And then you hear it. You hear Han Solo, this guy that Harrison Ford, would he ever come back to playing this iconic role? It never seemed like he wanted to. And not only did he want to, you could see it in his face when he's on screen telling Chewie we're home. It was a line that set the internet on fire and it just made me feel so good. It's one of my best memories of 2015. It, there was literally a seismic shift when that trailer dropped. When Han came on screen and said that line, Chewie, we're home. It took us from all being excited. Now, the people like yourself, me, were like fanatic for Star Wars already anyway, granted, but it took a lot of people from being excited that there was a new Star Wars movie coming to Oh my God, a new Star Wars movie is coming. And that's what that trailer did. And let's not forget, you also got your first glimpse of that Darth Vader helmet. And you're like, yes. okay, so if you had never, you didn't know there was a new Star Wars movie coming out and you're watching this, you're like, oh, they harken back. Oh, that's pretty cool. At the end, you see Han and Chewie. You're like, oh my God, they got these guys back? Yeah. This movie's going to be great. And number one, Batman versus Superman. Of all the trailers to hit Comic-Con, none made more of a splash than the Cape Crusader battling the Man of Steel. Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill highlighted footage that gave us insight into why Bruce Wayne was so upset at the alien Superman. A dash of storyline and a heavy dose of battling superheroes made this the best trailer of the year. And now coming off a more recent Batman v Superman trailer, this, <laughs> this might be most famous for what it didn't show, is that we got everything we needed, nothing we didn't. It showed us that DC apparently has finally gotten their DCU in order because Man of Steel was fine, it was a nice setup, but seeing this and the way that it's going to tie into the end of Man of Steel is what really sold me, not only on that movie, but the one coming up. Seeing Bruce Wayne run towards danger when everybody yes. else
yes. was coming out. It was kind of like seeing Brett Favre get off his tractor in Mississippi and get on a plane <laughs> to be a quarterback once again. Batman's coming out of retirement, and we finally get the Batman we always wanted to see on screen, the old grizzled veteran who is forced back into action by another thing that he perceives to be a threat. I loved watching this all the way up until you get the end. And then you see the new Batmobile and that new Batman huge suit, him yeah. just staring down Superman. God, I love this trailer. This is, again, like that Revenant situation. It's one, look, a lot of us have been waiting for a Batman versus Superman movie for decades, ever since that Frank Miller comic came out, man. You know, and then Zack uh, gets on stage, Zack Snyder, of course, the director of film, he gets on stage at Comic-Con a couple years ago, says there's a new Batman movie, there's a new Superman movie coming, it's gonna be influenced by The Dark Knight Returns, it's Batman's gonna be, it's gonna be Batman fighting Superman, and we have just been losing our minds since. But, what is the trailer gonna show? How is it gonna feel? Are we going to see, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger come on up, coming out and talking about making ice jokes? Or is it going to be something different? Is it going to be more in line with Frank Miller? There's, there's no nipple suits whatsoever, no, ladies none and gentlemen. Anywhere. And then they come out. And first of all, there was, we all forget now, but when they first announced Ben Affleck as Batman, oh, the jokes people made. Ain't nobody laughing anymore. <laughs> Ain't nobody laughing anymore after that trailer came out. And now even this, one of the, the things the second trailer did well, and it didn't do much well, but one of the things the second trailer did well is we got to hear the Batman voice, mm -hmm. which I actually think is a much better Batman voice than the one Christian Bale gave us in the other movies. Christian Bale might end up being a better Batman, we don't know, but I thought the voice was a lot better. But it was that trailer that signaled we have our crap together. We're moving in the right direction. Now, I am not a fan of the second trailer they put out, granted, but that does not in any way diminish from the greatness of that first trailer. It's been a long time, man, since I felt as emotionally pumped watching a trailer as I did for watching that Batman versus Superman trailer. I was literally like shaking and jumping in my seat. Not often, even trailers that I love, well, I just hit replay, 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 again and again and again. But there I was at Comic-Con in San Diego, sitting in my apartment, and I'm just hitting replay, 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 and watching it over and over and over again. It delivered, it totally delivered, and gave a lot of us hope, because even those of us who've been waiting decades for this film, man, didn't know if the movie was gonna be so good or not. I didn't know how much hope I had for it. I have hope hope now because that trailer was so damn good and that's what we want all these trailers to have done to us is that even just talking about batman v superman with you guys i'm like i is march here yet i need march yeah. to arrive here thank god it's only march we knew this movie had been finished for a while i think we'd even heard rumors this fall of how the movie got a standing ovation from its own executives which is cute <laughs> but nothing will do anything to a fan base like a great trailer and batman v superman was the best evidence of that in 2015. Well, there you have it, guys. Collider's top 10 trailers of 2015. And so many of you guys participated in the fan poll that we set up, and now we want you to show your work. Comment on this vid and tell us why did you vote for the trailer you did? What was it about that one that moved you so much that you put that at number one? And hey, listen, while you're here, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, keeping up to date on all the videos we put out here on Collider Video, including our daily movie talk, weekend mailbags, Jedi Council, Heroes, on and on and on. Make sure you subscribe. So, for for Mark Ellis, Ashley Mova, and myself, John Campia, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll catch you next time.